nice to be here this morning, tuning in virtually from the UK. And many thanks to the organizers as well for inviting me to speak today at this great event about a topic that I'm very passionate about, which is career information literacy. In my talk today, I'm going to tell you about this uh, relatively novel concept of career information literacy, and I will differentiate it from some of the other more commonly found concepts in our field, such as employability and workplace information literacy. And I'm going to consider what merits career information literacy has for scholars, for librarians, for citizens and policymakers. Uh, and I will also ask some of the big questions such as how much do we actually know about career information literacy? Uh, what is still out there for us to discover? So just before I start, a quick couple of words about myself and thank you for the introduction there. Um, I hail from Edinburgh, Scotland. I'm a third year PhD student at the School of Computing. At Edinburgh Napier, I teach on various courses in our school. Uh, I'm an active member of the social informatics research group. Uh, I work on projects relating primarily to information literacy and information behavior. And my PhD topic is about career information literacy and the decision making behaviors of young people. Uh, and I should say as well, my doctoral project is very generously funded by the Economic and Social Research Council and the Scottish Graduate School of Social Science. And I'm working very closely with Skills Development Scotland on the policy side to embed career information literacy instruction in the curriculum in Scottish schools. I'm also currently on secondment uh, at the Scottish Government. I'm working on a policy publication related to something called Developing the Young Workforce which is Scotland's national skills strategy for young people. Um, it's something that has been running for seven years now. It's really quite an ambitious thing that we have. So as you can tell, I'm very interested in careers, information literacy and policy making. I also have very uh, knowledgeable and smiley supervisors. Uh, so <laughs> my supervisors here are Dr. Peter Cruikshank, Professor Peter Robertson and Emeritus Professor Hazel Ho. Uh, pictured here at the staff party who have had a lot of input into my work and who are uh, very much like myself interested in career information literacy and in establishing a future for this in Scottish schools. Something that's quite unique in our research group is that we have a very high number of active PhD students and PhD completions. So we've got quite a lot of fresh talent which is being supported by our senior staff. And if you want to learn uh, a little bit more about what we do, uh, Hazel has a very good online presence. So just head over to her website. You will be able to learn about all of our ongoing projects and achievements. Uh, I would now like to officially open this talk with the definition of career information literacy. So what is it? Um, the definition that I coined last year is that it's an ongoing personal development project <laughs> whereby individuals engage in lifelong career development and learning and take action towards their long-term career development goals. So that's quite a long definition. So let's break it down a little bit. This definition draws from information science, but also from career studies. So it's an interdisciplinary definition. And it draws attention to the fact that career information literacy allows us to develop a career identity to learn about our strengths um, and about the world of work and to use information to make career decisions, especially during times of transition. So, for example, if you are a secondary school student, you are thinking about your future, having career information literacy would help you out a lot uh, because you would be able to access, use and evaluate career information. You can use this information to guide you into a positive career destination, be that in employment or in further education. Uh, it's also worth noting what is not career information literacy because there can be some confusion sometimes. Uh, it is easy to get a bit lost with the various overlaps in, in language that we have between work, employability and career. Uh, so in a scholarly sense, they are not the same. <laughs> and this is uh, actually a differentiation that I made very early on in my uh, doctoral project uh, in response to peer reviewers. So what I responded to them is work is current, it's, it's temporal, it's what we do within organizations. So it's very much tied to culture and values in your, in your workplace. 
employability is about the competencies that we put down on a CV. It's very much externally focused, so it's our ability to articulate our skills in a way that is attractive to employers. And career is a more broad concept, so it revolves around career identity, how we see ourselves and what sort of work we find enjoyable. Uh, and the career identity is always there. It doesn't matter if we are in work or not in work or looking to find work. Uh, we are always building our life project. Uh, in other words, we're planning for the future, not just for our next job, but also for the longer term. So with that distinction in mind, we can start to think about the applications of career information literacy and how different groups in society benefit from this. For information literacy scholars, career information literacy is an interesting interdisciplinary concept which touches upon many of our existing tra uh, traditions, such as everyday life behaviors, contextuality, and uh, information literacy landscapes, for example, such as those we see in Anne-Marie Lloyd's work. We also get interest into career information literacy from scholars who have worked on workplace and employability information literacy, adult literacies as well, uh, and the information literate life course. So if you're someone who's familiar with all of these types of literature, uh, as I'm sure you are since you are uh, at this seminar, then career information literacy uh, represents an opportunity for you to do some uh, exciting research in a new area. So it's somewhat under-researched and it's kind of new um, onto the scene. And one example of a recent career information literacy publication um, is the work done by Indian colleagues Arur and Sharma, uh, which came out last year. So just as an example, they studied the collaborative and social justice dimensions of Indian students' career information literacy. And it was a really good publication which drew on many of the themes uh, here on this slide. And librarians also have a big interest in career information literacy. They have an important role to play in maintaining a good career database, either physically or online in their libraries, as well as supporting students and citizens with their careers research. They often provide formal and informal information literacy instruction. They are indeed sometimes approached with career queries, so they need to be prepared to help point people to relevant resources in the first instance, but also to encourage them to continue doing careers research to find practical applications for the information they have gathered through the library. And it's similar with teachers as well. Even though they're not careers advisors, they still get asked about careers regularly. So members of the whole library and education system should be at least familiar with career information literacy, in my opinion. Citizens have much to benefit from career information literacy as well. Uh, research shows that their career success is dependent on their career information literacy skills and how well they can access, use and evaluate career information. You know, learning about careers uh, through career information is very important because it raises our awareness of what types of careers exist and are available to us. Um, this can also help to alleviate some of the socially rooted information poverties that we see and inequality in society as well. Um, for example, we often see in career services that young people are coming in with quite strong beliefs about what they can and cannot do. Uh, sometimes based on their social class um, and career information can actually help them to consider options that they previously thought were unattainable uh, and equally the career information literacy skills can help them with unrealistic and overly optimistic career expectations because they are teaching them about the world of work and what they can do. Um, so it's it's very important for citizens as well. And policymakers too, actually. So in, in the UK and in Europe, and I would imagine in uh, South Africa as well, we are increasingly looking at inequalities and skills gaps and low levels of economic productivity, uh, despite high levels of education in some countries. Uh, and what policymakers have picked up on is this potential intersection between what career services do and what information literacy instruction can do. And the opportunities here relate to the identification of the right information literacy skills to develop in the right setting and in the right time. 
and to the subsequent development of dedicated career information literacy programs in libraries and in the educational system. Um, I was just talking earlier there about librarians' uh, key role in supporting career information literacy, but I also recognize that we need to think about the big picture uh, and the structures needed to support librarians. So at the policy level, I think we can engage in a bit more joined up thinking and partnership activity and to not only develop career information literacy skills in citizens, but also to raise awareness um, about how we can support and coach careers advisors and librarians into assisting people who come to them with career queries. So even though uh, career information literacy is uh, still somewhat under-researched, we do know that career information landscapes are challenging to map and navigate and your typical student is likely at some point to become confused or overloaded by the sheer number of different documents and databases that they need to consult in order to obtain high quality, relevant, genuine and recent career information. So it's a big old task for them. It's one that's often socially mediated and this social dynamic is very interesting to me personally because um, people are like walking encyclopedias uh, of knowledge, but they need to be asked the right questions. You know, you're not just inputting keywords into a search engine, so it's it's a different skill set that you need to apply. Uh, so what we know overall about career information literacy is that the quality and the accessibility of information matters. So the information systems that we have in place matter on the one hand, but on the other hand as well, our proficiency our skills in making use of information matter as well. So it's two sides of the same coin that we need to be thinking about. And we need career information literacy instruction to help people extract value from the information instead of being overwhelmed by it. Um, however, there's still quite a bit that we do not know about career information literacy as well, especially with regards to skills. And this is something that I'm looking at in my research. I've been working on compiling lists of skills referenced in different publications, uh, even in areas that are lateral to uh, information literacy, such as career self-management, to try and envision a sort of transferable and buildable career information literacy skill sets. And here are some of the skills I've encountered. We've got life skills, problem solving skills, technical skills, social media skills, critical thinking skills. There's so many of them out there in the literature. And it's really unclear if some of these skills are one and the same under a different label, or are they indeed different skills that we all need to develop in order to be able to call ourselves career information literate? I would guess that we would need most, if not all of these skills, uh, especially in the digital era. Can we really ignore matters such as online safety and the prevalence of TikTok, for example? Not really. I, I think we should not just focus on teaching very basic career research skills and bibliographic skills, but also all of the other um, skills that come with career development. So what is the bottom line then for career information literacy? What are the takeaway messages from this talk? Firstly, career information literacy is not exactly the same as uh, work and employability information literacy. And indeed, many different parties are becoming interested in career information literacy, uh, which is great to see, and we need even more activity from libraries and policymakers. Um, and there is much more to discover about information literacy in a scholarly sense, especially in terms of the skills that we need to be developing in people and just thinking about the ways that we can do this in practice and embed it into the curriculum. So that marks the end of my talk. Many thanks for listening.